Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. When Nicola Sturgeon asked the Greens to come on board and help run a majority government through a coalition, she had little understanding at the time that she would be abnegating all responsibility of power and handing it to a very small party filled with very weird people. You see, they, the SNP, are the big powerful party and it should be them calling the shots and you know, giving the Greens a few leavings from the table. Give them three things. You can have three things. We'll try and push them through and see how it goes. But the rest of the time, you vote with us. That should have been the, the approach and constantly reminding them that they are very much the junior partner in this relationship. But that's not what's happened. And especially uh, now that Hamza Yousaf is in charge, you have a very small green tail wagging a very huge yellow dog. And nobody in the SNP seems to have the balls to be able to say no. Why does such a small party with so few votes have so much power? But half the problem, of course, is that it's the SNP don't have any ideas. They've got no policies. All the policies going through are coming from the Greens. And that's why they're failing, because they are basically bonkers. But still, nobody's prepared to stand up to these people, especially Hamza who's tied his colours to their mast. He's a very weak man in a very bad position and the Greens are walking all over him and it's making the SNP look ineffective, look weak and look like they exist only and purely to serve their Green masters. Let's take a look. So Scottish Greens holding power over the Butte House Agreement and thus over the SNP of course will weaken the SNP, say the backbenchers. And this is the SNP backbenchers that are saying this. But it's not just weakening them within Holyrood. The perception out in the country is that the SNP aren't very good and they need the Greens. They, they can't function without the Greens there to guide them. It's almost how it is. Uh, it weakens Hamza Yousaf personally because he, he seems like he can't do anything without it having signed off by Geoffrey and the Imp. That's not how a leader should be. A leader should go and lead, not go and ask permission. SNP backbenchers are piling pressure on Hamza Yousaf to restore the power balance in the Butte House Agreement and rethink the deal after warning the future of the government resting on Green members makes the First Minister's group look like the weak party. Well, they, they aren't just looking and being perceived as the weak party. They absolutely are. If they weren't, they wouldn't be in this position. This is what happens when you elect a eunuch as a first minister. The Ken Doll of Scottish politics doesn't have the cojones for the job. Green members have forced a vote on whether Patrick Harvey and Lorna Slater's party should continue in government, with the SNP after a backlash spark by the Scottish government scrapping its 2030 legally binding climate target to cut emissions by 75% and a perceived rollback of gender identity services. Why are these things important to the Greens? Why do they think that destroying the Scottish economy is gonna help the world when it won't? And why do they think that the mass sterilization of children is something that should be aimed at and is virtuous? It goes to show exactly what the Greens are and why they should be nowhere near power. Indeed, they should be castigated, laughed at, treated as a fringe extremist party and never given votes. They should be forcibly broken up. They're doing so much damage. And yet the SNP admire them and love them, or at least the leadership does. Uh, the Green member uprest where their party leadership back, uh, back in the climate U-turn could topple the cooperation agreement between the two parties of government. And of course, as I reported earlier, take Harvey completely out of the leadership uh, of the party, which would be great. Uh, but back, uh, SNP backbenchers have told the Scotsman that those in the party who have long been calling for the ties to be cut with their partners are worried the standoff is weakening the authority of their party and elevating the Greens. What uh, a, a proper true leader right now would do is say, look, we don't care about your vote. It's done. Let's face it. The very fact that you're having that vote, it's done. Because even if you vote to remain, we can never trust you again. So let's call it a day. Bang, we're two years away. We'll run a minority government for two years. Let's see how it goes. See, and see how it goes. Uh, some SNP backbenchers are furious with Mr. Harvey's response on the CAS review into gender identity services in England after the Greens Minister told the BBC 
he'd seen far too many criticisms to consider the report a valid scientific document. But these criticisms, of course, are coming from extremists, from weirdos, from activists. They're not coming as part of any kind of peer-reviewed scientific process. They're not coming from experts in the field. Indeed, all the experts agree with Cass. But when you get the lunatics going, oh, we don't like it because I don't stops me from sterilising children. Oh, well, there you go, that's a criticism. Oh, we've got a criticism against it. Therefore, I don't believe a word of it. It's got nothing to do with the scientific process, of course. It's because Harvey is a deviant who likes the idea of having little boys very much feminised. Uh, anyway, the Scottish Government has been attacked by those who have been critical of gender identity services for not immediately accepting the findings of the CAS review. With ministers uh, stressing they will take time to examine the conclusions which were drawn up for NHS England. But some Greens, including Harvey and Ross Greer, have been critical of the study. Funny that, isn't it? How these two particular people have been very critical of plans to not sterilise children and they don't like the idea of little boys being feminised, etc. They've got a thing about young boys being feminised, these two, apparently. Uh, prominent members of the SNP are now calling for their party to revisit the Butte House Agreement. A lot of them, Cherry, uh, F Forbes, Ewing, the other Ewing, of which more later. One, MSP, M uh, one SNP MSP told the Scotsman, those on the questioning side of the Butte House Agreement see recent statements by Harvey as embarrassing, adding it is not the behaviour you would expect from a Scottish government minister. It's more akin to that of a student politician and weirdo and sexual deviant, perhaps, allegedly. Uh, the MSP warned that if things continue, um, Mr Harvey will embarrass the SNP, embolden the Greens and weaken the SNP. You know, beyond, well, it's already weak, isn't it? Uh, he said, it does feel like we are the weak party here. Well, you're bang on, spot on and right. The backbencher said, the SNP hierarchy does not want to have any chat about their worth their weight in gold greens. I think there is a growing group that does. He said, but they will try to duck, ignore and divert, he says. But there is the law of diminishing returns. Outspoken MSP, uh, SNP MSP, Fergus Ewing told the Scotsman, the Green Deal is deeply damaging to the SNP. And we all know he's right. And the time is coming. And either the Greens go or the SNP will have a, a, a split. There'll be a civil war as they will try desperately to get rid of the Greens from government. And it'll happen very soon. Possibly within 24 hours, there, there'll be a rancorous call. It all depends on the vote today. Um, and if they do lose it and Hamza Yousaf is weakened, I think that could be the catalyst for change. Anyway, we'll come up and finish. I think it is now beyond the event horizon, as it were. We, it, it's now inevitable that the Butte House Agreement will die. Either the Greens will leave, the SNP will vote to leave, or there'll be a change of leadership and Forbes will just cause it to all implode, something like that. We are absolutely in the end days of the Butte House Agreement. And I think possibly as well in the death throes of the SNP. This has weakened the party so much. Everybody's seen them for what they are, that they are ineffectual, that they are useless, that the None of them have got a clue what they're doing. And so with a bit of luck, that should be it. Um, it'll be all over, you know. And it's coming to a natural end. And that's great. It's absolutely great news. Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for, hitting, uh, for watching the video. Do hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment. Please share the video and I will speak to you later. Bye.